Hey, it's just Jeff from Hardwood Mills. I'm just going to take you over the Hardwood Mills Sharpener, which is a product we've been selling for many, many years. We're just going to show you basically completely setting it up, taking the hook out of the blade, which means preparing uh, the blade more for a harder timbers like railway sleepers or recycled timbers, sharpening, sharpening tungsten carbide. So we're just going to go from way to go on setup. So this is basically uh, all the equipment laid out. Uh, you can see the sharpener head um, and the sharpener base, it's all made in Australia. This is a, an accessory, you can set these up to sharpen chainsaws as well. So, um, alright, so the first thing you do when you get it, what we do is we're going to put these outriggers on the log, on the back sorry, of the sharpener. Just drop those on, and they're telescopic. Like so now, it's important, what a lot of people tend to do here when they're setting these up, they'll put them under there like so. And what that does is it gets it, the blades at the wrong height as it goes through the jaws and it'll sort of kick around, which is what you, which is not what you want to do. So you want these on top of the base, not underneath. Now setup on these is pretty quick. Um, Normally once you've got these things set up, you sort of just leave them in your shed. Um, sometimes when I do field work, I, I use them on the back of a tray of a truck. It's a nice, nice stable platform, but a table's good because you've only got to have really the silver parts um, stabilised. So we're just going to um, extend these out. Just the blades there ready to go. So just extend these out telescopically. So we have these, these uh, can be moved in and out for different length blades. Um, now these sharpeners, they, we're going we're gonna to go on uh, blades that are two different sizes. One is inch and a half and one is inch and a quarter. So one is 36 mil and um, the other is 40 mil. But we can go all the way up to two inch uh, blades in size uh, on these sharpeners. And people have sharpened them. I've even had a guy run a three inch, but that's quite large. But it will do it. But mainly we just recommend uh, inch and a quarter, inch and a half and two inch. So, put this in through here. So we're just going to go basically step by step through the sharpener and setting it up.
So um, the next thing we do is we adjust the uh, the adjust the jaws on this this machine. So that's around the front here. Just these uh, and a high plane. Um, just just come around the front and I'll show them around here just on the jaws. So we've got the uh, these here now. Why, why these move up and down like this is they are basically uh, to adjust. Um, got more thumbs today. They're, they're to adjust different blade heights, so they slide up and down. So what you want to do when you put a blade on these things, you want to get the blade as low as you can. So generally, I kind of leave them sort of semi loose, so I can just tap them around a little bit with my hand. Here. I grab a blade, put the blade up. Put my eye protection on. So what we're going to do is drop the blade in. Now, I'm just going to show a common error. Sometimes people, I'll put the jaws in upside down like that. And it's not as good. You, you want these two posts to the bottom. So we're just going to drop that blade in like that. Now, normally what I do is I get the blade and I just get it to sit in there and I'll tighten it up with the jaws. So in here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'll just put a spanner in there like that. So, see how it's, the gullet's nice and uh, level. Spanner in here like so, nice and level. And I'm just gonna tighten that up. Just get it, so basically, the lowest point of the gullet, the lowest point of the gullet is sort of roughly with the back of the jaw there. And you'll see these, then what we do, we just put these, bring these back in. And we just give them a little bit of a tighten. Then I'll just use one of these. So that's the first thing. The, the, the problem with, with, with a lot of people I notice when they get these things, and I've done, I did it myself when we first had them, they'll have this blade right up, sitting right up high. And the problem with that is, is that the, uh, there's a couple of problems. The, the, the sharpener, it's more like a, a drop saw or a plunge saw. And it'll come down and it'll hit the blade at a wrong angle, hit, hit it like this, where we want it to hit like this. So that's basically what that does. Now the next part we have, this is part more for big blades here. It's just a little restrictor there. And we can bow the blades out a little bit on bigger blades, on two inch blades. Um, but mainly, as I said, we sell these. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna tighten that up so it just sits in where it needs to. And um, it's also a spacer. So it spaces the, uh, the blade out. Just all you need to know is just you just got to get that little bolt out of the way. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put uh, the indexing part of the part of the sharpener on. So a lot of people make mistakes. I put them to the front. And you see it won't work. So what we do is we put this to the rear like so. Now what this does, it does what it says. It indexes. So it, it will push the blade because blades, different blades, different styles of blades. The teeth are at different spacing, spacings. Um, so what we're going to do, we're just going to put the right tools. We're just going to tighten that up, but not too tight. And then we're going to, we're just going to leave that there, and we're going to put the sharpener head on next. You want to jam that, you want that so that can move. And you'll see how that moves backwards and forwards like so. Okay, so we'll come, we'll come back to that once the sharpener head's on the machine. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our sharpener head and we're going to put a uh, sharpening disc on. So there's two styles of sharpening discs. This, this is um, aluminium oxide. 
So you can use this on the bimetal carbon, not that we really sell carbon steel, uh, blades. And then you've got uh, an optional diamond blade. And we use, we use this, uh, the, do, the diamond blade on tungsten carbide, but this, this can be used on tungsten carbide and bimetals and carbon, where the aluminium oxide can only be used on the, on spring set blades, which are carbon and, and, um, aluminium, uh, carbon and, uh, bimetal. So, we're gonna, you need to fit your blade with this off the machine. So, we basically just turn it over. You've got two plates. It's it's sort of similar to an angle grinder, how it goes in. So we're going to put the aluminium oxide. That's the blade that comes with it. Just slip that in there like so, in there like that, and away you go. And we're just going to tighten so like this. Tighten this up. Like that. Okay, and then that goes onto the sharpness. So just bring the safety guard back on. And this goes in like so. We just get the washer. Put that on. Like that. And now, if you just come around the front, what I'll do, we are just got, now, with sharpening, you've got a few things. So you've got blade, blade height in the jaws, so we've already covered that. Uh, <clears throat> we've got depth, which is back here. So that's your depth of your blade. So you just, we're just gonna wind that down. So we're gonna start there. We're just gonna roughly get the depth sort of where we want it, and we can tune that in. Now, these are pretty basic. There's a few little tricks you can use between this point, this point and this point, when you're doing uh, bi-metal, it's roughly 35 mils between here and here. But I don't really do it that way. What I do, and I find the best way, is to uh, is basically just to simply match the blade to the tooth. So I just get it over, and I just bring the, bring the tooth back, and I match it. Now normally I'll even, get, I'll even go as far as getting down on one knee, and I'll look in here, uh, and I'll make sure that that's, that that's spot on. So what you want to see is you want to see really no no light between this this area. I'll just move that around so you can see this area, the blade in here. You don't want to see any light. You want to see that completely matched. And again, that's roughly around 35 mil from that point to that point, right like that. So that's okay. Now we're just going to tune our depth up a little bit. We want to we want to come as close to the gullet as we can. Which the gullet is this part of the blade here, without actually hitting the uh, hitting the um, hitting the gullet. Right. So just a little bit more depth and tune that in. Always lock off. And now we're going to do indexing. Right. So indexing is uh, is adjusting uh, is adjusting the um, the blade. What we'll do is take that out. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to. Um, sometimes these are a very broad pitch blade. So sometimes what you've got to do is you just you reposition these. Oops, I dropped it. So I'm just going to put this in. So this is basically you, you move this. In relation to where the where where the blade is, um, it, it, it's sort of how a chainsaw sharpener works on a chain. You index chains, so the indexing is the mark because this is an inch TPI. So and so this is a good blade for hardwood. But if you were cutting, say, pine, um, and I don't mean cypress pine, I mean like radiata pine, you'd run seven eighths of a pitch uh, inch. So this is twenty five mil, uh, twenty five point four, seven eighths is around. Oh, nine, oh, not 19, about 18, roughly. Uh, and it's a finer blade and it's for pine, but uh, we don't really sell too many of those blades. Most people just cut hardwood with these things, but this blade will cut hardwood, uh, will cut uh, pine, um, but you get a bit more jeopardy out of a finer blade for, uh, for pine. I'm just gonna take that, that locking nut off the front. 
So we're just going to do every step on this. Okay. So we're just going to screw this in here without the locking nut at, at, at this point. And we're just going to index this. So it's winding and we'll get it roughly where we want it. You just a couple of clicks. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Now here, you can hear that scrape. That's probably, probably a little bit too much. You always confirm with a couple of clicks. So we're just gonna take that back a turn. Yeah, it's not too bad, not too bad. Now, when, when, we, when we sharpen blades, some people come straight down on top of the tooth and, and um, that's how a lot of people do it. I've got a different technique and I'll show you. I flex the flex the machine just a little bit. And by flexing that, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you how that works. So you're basically hitting it on the way up. Now, you wanna make sure this is tight because um, you know, you don't lock this in, you'll be in there milling and it'll, it'll start moving and you know, you can imagine that the chaos that'll cause in the blade. You can hear it's just hitting, just hitting like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so especially when you're out in direct sunlight like this, uh, you, um, <clears throat> it's very hard, you'll, you won't be able to really see where you've milled. So what I tend to do is I tend to, I'll, I'll mark a blade up, up like that now, now, generally, you, you really should start when you're sharpening, you should start on the join. But once blades have been around the machine a little bit, uh, where the blade was welded, it's very hard to find. So you just got to watch it. So sometimes the tooth spacing can be a little bit different. So you're going to come down. Now, what we're doing, I'll just show you with a demonstration of this out here. What we're actually doing, we're matching that exactly like that. And we're coming down a little bit short. And then we're flicking up like that. So we're coming down exaggerated of course and coming up like that that's how i sharpen some people top grind they just come straight down and you can do that there's nothing wrong with that you can see that just come down there so you can see you see that you see that there and it's just a little bit of tickle now normally when i sharpen i don't sit in front of the machine i sit off to the machine because that way i can actually keep an eye on the teeth and you can see that sitting at a sharpen And that's how you sharpen a, a um, that's how you sharpen a bimetal blade, right? You just go around, nice and gentle. Now, uh, sometimes, sometimes you'll get timber that is like I, I do railway sleepers, old bridging timber, very hard. Sometimes you've got to knock a little bit of hook out of these blades. So at the moment, at the moment, that blade is basically is is exactly lined up with the shape of the tooth, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to not we're just going to stand that blade up just a little bit, maybe only a mil. So how we do that is it's pretty simple. We just get right down like that. And what I want to see is I just want to see just a tad of light at the bottom, maybe a paper thickness of light. Oh, it moved on me, just a tad of light at the bottom. So so I'm grinding the top a little bit more, and that'll stand the tooth up. Now you can go too far with this because you do need hook to cut, but that'll stand. Hard timber, and that will basically it, it's just not as aggressive and it'll cut a lot better. You don't always have to do that, but sometimes some of these I get timber out of salt water and that's very hard. Now, when you adjust this like this, this will slightly affect this. So I'm just going to adjust that just to turn like that. That will slightly that will slightly affect your spacing. So it's the principle is the same. You're just coming down. You can see that. A little bit more aggressive, a little bit more spark coming out. You want to be gentle. You don't want to see big heat lines coming off. And what that does is that, that just stands the tooth up. It squares the face a little bit. And that blade, it'll cut anything, any, anything the way it is. That's spring set. Okay, so that's how to pre-correct the angle of a, of a tooth, right? Now we're going to, we're going to talk about the, the latest and greatest thing, which is tungsten carbide in these mills. Okay, so... These aluminium oxide blades, they can't, they can't sharpen uh, a tungsten carbide. It's just too hard. It'll burn, it'll carry on. 
it'll wreck the blade. So we need to we need to replace this blade with the optional diamond blade we have here. So we're going to do that, and we're going to put the tungsten on, and we're going to sharpen that. So we're just going to take that back. Down. And we'll whack the tungsten on. Now, it's a good thing we're using a different blade here. Just put these in here. Now, this tungsten blade is around about 40 mil. So it's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, wider, only it's about. Uh, four mil wider, so you see the blade sitting up a little bit, like so. So what we're going to do is we're just going to knock that blade down. Now these tungsten blades are great, they'll cut anything, you know, iron bark, and, I mean, the spring set blades will as well, but these cut for a lot longer. We've got people cutting up railway sleepers with them, all sorts of stuff. And they just cut and cut and cut, they're amazing. So what we've done, you see that we've bought this just, we've just lowered these a little bit, it's a different size blade. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change the, the aluminium oxide to the diamond blade. And we're just going to just change that out now. So that's, this is basically, as I said, it's just like a heel grinder. Sometimes when they get a bit old, these can be hard to get off. There's a little, little bit of a recess in the, uh, in the armature. And you can just stick, you can stick a screwdriver or something in there. It's designed to do it, and that'll stop this from spinning because they're not always that easy. So just take that off, drop that in, like so. Now, like, now, like I was saying earlier, uh, this is an optional blade, not optional extra, but you can do the bimetal blades and carbon blades we were doing earlier with this uh, with this machine with this uh, diamond our blades. We just do the opposite. So this will be kind of like setting up the sharpener uh, from scratch, right? Because everything's changed. The blade's bigger, uh, blade's taller. The, um, there? the blade's taller. The, um, the, the tooth pitch is a little finer than the um, tungsten carbide, uh, than the bimetal. And the tooth angles is, is a little bit less. It's seven degrees where that's ten. So we're just going to do the same what we did earlier, just your depth, which are all a little bit different. So just back this off a bit. We're just going to roughly get our depth where we want it. And then we're going to get down and we're going to line, line the blade up a little bit. It's a little bit in there. So you just want, you really get down on one, one knee and you just really get in there and line that up. It's like firing a rifle. You want to really line both sides of this up to this. It's a little bit steeper as you can see. It's just the way the tungsten sits. Uh, okay, so then what we're going to do is index the blade or the spacing, so you can see that. So that's out. Look, that's hitting at the back there. So what we need to do is, I think we need to push that along a little bit. So we're just going to back off that, back off this. See that the different pitch really, really, really changes the way the blade 
work. So we're in there, just going to adjust the de depth a little bit. And we're going to sharpen this. So, uh, so basically it's the same sharpening uh, technique. Um, let's see if I turn that on. And I'm going to again sit off to the side because you want it. You want to be able to see that the tooth being silvered. So it's going to a little bit more depth applied. And I want to just watch the face. Yep, it's silver. Next tooth down. And that's all it is. Just be gentle with it. to doing the, bi uh, the bi-metal, the tungsten, and we've gone dabbled a little bit with uh, pre-correcting the bi-metal blades. And um, and thank you, I hope everyone has had fun using these and milling. I love, I actually like sharpening more than milling, but anyway, thank you again for everyone supporting and supporting Australian-made products. <laughs>